So in the earlier class, we have already discussed different lithography techniques and their merits and demerits. Now, we will discuss some of the important points which cause defects on the lithography pattern and some of the parameters which are very important so far as resolution in a lithography system is concerned. One such parameter is modulation transfer function that is MTF modulation transfer function. MTF is a very important parameter in addition to resolution and is used to characterize a projection system. It relates the incident intensity to the spatial distribution of the intensity of the image on a wafer. The parameter MTF determines the quality of image presented the resist with respect to the mask image. As I told you that the mask plate is consist of different transparent and opaque regions. When ultraviolet light passes through it or any optical beam, parallel optical beam passes through those the transparent and opaque regions. So, there are different optical effects will take place and those effects are the interference, diffraction, scattering, etc. And because of that, the quality of the image may deteriorate and the intensity will be modulated after passing through the mass. So, because of that modulation, the quality of the image may change as with this or with respect to the mass image. So, this MTF value determines the quality of the image presented to the resist with respect to the mass image. And MTF is defined as the M image divided by M mask and this MTF is a function of nu and nu is spatial frequency defined as the inverse of grating speed. Nu is a spatial frequency defined as the inverse of the grating pitch. And the modulation of mask M mask, it is defined by I mask minus I mean divided by I mask plus I mean. I is the intensity level, intensity in the mask level, maximum intensity in the mask and minimum intensity in the mass, the difference and addition and if you take the ratio that is the modulation of mass. Similarly, the modulation in image is again I max minus I mean divided by I max plus I mean in the image and if you take the ratio of M, M image divided by M mask that means modulation of image divided by modulation of mass is known as MTF or modulation transfer function. Okay. Now, this drawing shows the optical diffraction effects for different lithography printing techniques. So, here you can see this is the opaque region, the black region and black region on the mask and here is a transparent that means through which the optical beam passes with an intensity I naught. 
Okay. Now, here the intensity pattern for contact printing lithography, proximity, proximity printing lithography and projection printing lithography is shown. Now, in case of contact printing lithography, so in the mask is in close contact with the photoresist coated wafer. So, then you can see the pattern in the dotted line just perfectly I naught intensity when the uh, th throughout the transparent region of the mask and zero intensity throughout the opaque region of the mask. That means this one the dotted line curve is for contact printing lithograph. There is no gap between the mask and the resist coated wafer. So, you will get either the same intensity I naught or you will get zero intensity. In case of proximity printing alignment, you can see here the intensity pattern after the mask. Here the intensity changes from 1.2 I naught to say 0.95 or 0.96 I naught. That means here you can find a variation of intensity. And at the edges of the opaque region, the intensity is very poor, somewhere 0.6 or 0.7 I naught nearly 60 to 70 percent at the just ages. This is because of finite gap between the mask plate and the wafer. And here at the ages, some sort of diffraction takes place here and here in both ages and there in intensity and intensity modulation is normally observed. And at the middle also there is a modulation that is in the case of proximity, then the quality of the image will not be very good. But in case of contact printing, if you can, if you can calculate the MTF, then the MTF value will be very good because you see I max and I mean. So, either it is maximum or another is a 0, is not it? Where it is opaque, it is 0 and when it is transparent, it is exactly I naught. Now coming to the projection system. The projection system, the gap is very large. So obviously, after the beam passes, when the beam passes through the mass, then the intensity will gradually reduce if, if the distance of the wafer is far away from the mass. Because intensity is also a function of the distance of the optical source to the screen. Screen means here uh, where it is incident, is not it? So, there uh, the wafer is far away from the mass. So, here we can found the, the at this age and this age intensity is very poor and the intensity profile is like that in case of projection system. So, their MTF will not be very good. This is the quality of the image. So, that this uh, the three intensity profile will give you some idea regarding the quality of images obtained in case of contact, proximity and projection printing lithograph. Now, another problem in case of uh, optical lithography is found that is known as standing light waves. So, what is that? Let us see in this diagram. So, here you see this is a air column and then this is a photoresist layer and then oxide silicon dioxide for example, this is a film and then comes the substrate. So, what is the standing wave pattern? Standing wave pattern, the standing wave phenomena is observed in, in optical in 
is a basically an optical effect when two rays incident one on other which is ori originated from the same source that means the wavelength is same is not it and they differ by a phase then interference will take place optical interference that is and they, can, they may form some uh, uh, interference pattern either it may be constructive interference or destructive interference and that influence the photoist image. For example, here in this diagram you see the, the ray either UV or any other optical wave, the ray passes through air and it enters into the photoist film then into the silicon dioxide then the substrate and here the air photoist and oxide all three are transparent medium transparent to the UV light. So, as soon as it is come in contact with the substrate that is not at all transparent to the beam and then it is uh, reflected back. Here also there will be little bit reflection because uh, the, inter, uh, the uh, refractive index are different. So, now from here totally it is reflected and then some portion of the then uh, at the air photoist interface there it is some portion will be transmitted and again some portion will be reflected. So, at each of these interface of the two medium some amount will be reflected, some amount will be transmitted and some will be refracted like that. So, from 1 means the path 1 then it passes through path 2 then reflected back and it, it is traveling on part, path 3 again from reflection air photoist interface it follows path 4. Now thing is that you see the 1 and 4. So, 1 is in the same direction this one and 4 is in the same direction this 2 wave and the the 4 the path and the 1 or 2 this path the both the path are in the same direction and both the rays are originated from the same. That means wavelength is uh, would be same that means it is I, I, I want to say it is a monochromatic source monochromatic same wavelength the 1 and 4 and maybe they are differ by phase because each reflection we introduce a phase change. So, then these two 1 and 4 will superimpose on other and they will form an interference this is the basic principle of the interference. So, they will interference and that interference may be constructive interference or destructive interference and that interference means there is a thin pattern intensity modulation. So, that may influence the photoist image. So, that is one uh, problem one effect which deteriorate the quality of the image in the photoresist film and that is due to the standing light wave in a photoresist film ok standing wave pattern. So, this is one lithography problem. The next is proximity effect another effect and this proximity effect is due to the scattering phenomena. And the proximity effect is see here when the optical uh, the beam of radiation is of high energy. If the low energy beam and lower wavelength beam has got less effect. First, let us try to understand what is the proximity effect. So, here in this diagram you can see uh, the three lines are very close to each other. So, this is these are the desired line one is the red this is the blue and this is the green type and this is the substrate and this is the photoresist thickness is here. We want a pattern like this which is shown the red, blue and green color. Now, 
when it is exposed either using UV light or electron beam and there is another class of lithography which is electron beam lithography we, I will discuss in the at the end of this particular section EB lithography. So, when the either electron beam or say the ultraviolet light when it is scanned through this, so they will pass through this photoresist. Now, at this particular interface at the photoresist and the substrate, here is a photoresist and here is a substrate at this interface, then they will scatter. And because of the scattering, you see that there may be some back scattering. You see this electron beam comes here and it penetrates little bit the substrate and from the substrate it turns back. Some of the beams will pass through the substrate, some of the beam will be reflected from the substrate up to the say for example, if a photoresist then oxide is as I told you is a transparent to UV light it passes through it and as it comes to the substrate it is a completely opaque to the beam and that from there it will be reflected back. So, that reflected back means some of the rays will reflected from different depths of the substrate and it will coming back. When it is coming back then these rays will have less intensity no doubt, but this particular ray will again expose the resist film here which is coming due to the back scattering. So, the beam electron beam or the ultraviolet beam is incident it passes through the photoresist, it crosses the resist substrate interface, then from the substrate it scattered back. Due to the scattered back some of the regions which we do not want to expose that will be exposed by those scattered beams although its intensity is not as the incident beam intensity. So, they will expose very near to this the pattern and here also then after development and the image pattern will not be exactly same as a desired line soft line. So, here it will be broadened this edge and this edge it will be broadened here and here it will be broadened. Similarly, here you see it has it has broadened here also it has broadened because the bottom the back reflect area scattered waves again expose this region. So, the developed resist image become wider than the expected one expected one is this one what is shown in the top this is the desired line, but a resist image is a broadened from this point to this point. So, that is known as the proximity effect. Now, you see if these lines are very close then because of the proximity effect what will what you will get you may this this particular the gap may vanish. If this line you say blue and this red this line are very close to each other because of the proximity effect here it will be exposed the whole thing will be exposed. So, here this region may be vanished. So, this is one of the problem in case of lithography the proximity effect and those things will be very critical when you think of the fine line lithography that is basically in ULSI or VLSI technology when the feature charge is sub micron region there it this problem is critical, but if the line the gap between the two lines are say 8 micron 10 micron then there is no problem. Okay, little bit widened, but it will not pose any uh, any uh, it will not pose lot of danger basically. So now the uh, next I will discuss on the exposure tool. Exposure tool is the mask alignment machine is the exposure tool, and that exposure tool. there are uh, several parameters by which we can evaluate an exposure tool. Those parameters are namely resolution, registration and throughput. Resolution, registration and throughput. 
these three parameters basically evaluate and expose the tool or mask aligner. What is resolution? Resolution is defined in terms of the minimum feature that can be repeatedly exposed and developed at least one micron of resistance. Again I repeat, resolution is defined in terms of the minimum feature that can be repeatedly exposed and developed in at least one micron of resistance. Next parameter is registration. Registration is a measure of how closely successive mask levels can be overlaid. And the third parameter is the throughput. Throughput is the number of silicon wafers that can be exposed per hour. Okay. So, resolution, registration and throughput for different lithography tools that means contact mask aligner, proximity lab mask aligner and projection mask aligners are different. So, these three parameters basically evaluate and expose the tool. Now, now uh, we will see how one layer and another layer For alignment, how the gap between two layers are maintained. So, in this diagram, you can see the two mask levels. Okay, mask level one and mask level two. The mask level two is aligned inside the mask level one. Now, the mask level 1 has got the boundary the YOLO line that is the age 1 and when you make the image of the mask level 1 on wafer, the age may lie either this white line or it may be inside this white line. That means, there is a uncertainty. Those uncertainties are due to various reasons. I will tell what are the reasons. When you are aligning the mask level 1 at the beginning, then each edge, the four edges are there, each edge will have certain uncertainty. And this uncertainty is from this lane to this lane, this is the uncertainty. Similarly, when you are aligning the mask level 2, so it has got again the four edges and those four edges will have certain uncertainty of printing. And the final image on the photorist pattern wafer this edge 2 may be inside this mask level here or it may be in this region. So, this is the, the uncertainty of the edge 2, edge 1 uncertainty and edge 2 uncertainty. Now, the minimum distance in the worst case that means, edge 1 may come here and the edge 2 can go up to here. 
so that is minimum gap so that is the this one that is known as overlay uncertainty so the you see the left side and right side the edge one can go right side up to this and left side up to this similarly mass two edge can go right side up to this so this is the minimum gap you are getting in the oath case so that is known as overlay uncertainty and when you are designing then you are you are making a gap or, or a tolerance between mass one edge and mass two edge by this distance and that distance is known as nesting tolerance because you are nesting mass two inside mass one and you are allowing uh, uh, you are allowing a tolerance from this distance to this distance and that is known as the nesting tolerance so obviously the nesting tolerance is dependent on the age one uncertainty and then age two uncertainty and there are other certain parameters on which again this uh, nesting tolerance depends those are the human error uncertainty the age one and age two uncertainties may be due to the uh, lithography defects defects means there the non uniformity of the resist thickness may be variation of the exposure intensity the intensity of the exposure uh, uh, beam the uv light may not be uniform over the whole region may be due to the improper development after exposure because of the various reason so the edges may be shifted either in the left side or in the right side but over and above there may be an error that error may be due to human being human error and there may be some error due to the machine itself if the machine cannot register on level on the other level in an accurate position then it will also introduce certain error so the nesting tolerance is dictated by three factors what are those three factors the location of the device feature edges on the silicon wafer may not be exactly as specified by original circuit layout it varies from chip to chip on mass because of improper exposure and that variation may be plus minus 0.2 micron on wafer this variation increases due to variation in resist thickness exposure and develop condition okay next point is uncertainty involved in aligning due to registration capability and human uncertainty one is the machine uncertainty what is that that is aligning due to registration capability different machine has got different registration capability so that will introduce certain uncertain uh, error and other is the human uncertainty that machine registration uncertainty and human uncertainty together may be of the order of plus minus 0.5 micron and the third one is broadening by lateral diffusion what is that one when you diffuse impurity into the windows then that diffusion will take place not only vertically downward but also lateral side it also diffuse in the lateral direction also that means whatever the edges you define you want within that particular edges the impurity should go but it is not really the practice the impurity atom will diffuse at the surface also at, at the lateral surface also so because of that you have to allow certain space so all these parameters parameters one is broadening due to lateral diffusion 
then uncertainty involved with aligning due to registration capability of the machine and human uncertainty and the other one is the uncertainty due to lithography process, improper exposure, non-uniformity of thickness of the photoresist, improper development because of that. So when you are designing mask, then you have to think all those parameter accordingly the nesting tolerance you have to select. Isn't it? All these parameters you have to keep in mind when you are making the layout of the transistor or layout of any device which are you going to make on silicon chip. So, the nesting tolerance is given by uh, given mathematically by this relation that is T is equal to 3 under root sigma f n by 2 square plus sigma f 2 by 2 square plus sigma r square and what are sigmas? Where sigma r is the registration uncertainty and sigma f 1 and sigma f 2 are age feature uncertainty for mask level 1 and 2. Sigma F1 is the age feature uncertainty of mask level 1, sigma F2 is the age feature uncertainty for mask level 2 and sigma R is the registration uncertainty. That is the nesting tolerance. Okay. So, these are all about the exposure tools. Now, till now we have discussed the optical lithography technique and the exposure tools, various problems because of the optical effect. Now we will discuss on the X-ray lithography. As I mentioned in earlier discussion that the resolution is also the function of wavelength. Again, all these geometrical effects, particularly the, the scattering effect or diffraction effect, etc., is dependent on the wavelength of the radiation which you are using for exposing the photo, uh, photo resist. So, the lambda of the exposure wavelength. It has an important contribution in the in defining the resolution. In that respect, if I use X-rays instead of optical beams like ultraviolet ray, so it is expected that resolution will be very good because X-ray wavelength is very very small compared to much smaller compared to the ultraviolet light. So, what are the specific features of the X-ray lithography? And those specific features one by one, that means first we have to see the advantages, okay? And then we can uh, see the problems also. So, X-ray lithography is an extension of optical proximity printing in which exposing wavelength is in the range of 4 to 50 angstrom. Extra wavelength used for extra lithography is 4 to 50 angstrom units. It reduces the extra lithography reduces diffraction effects due to shorter wavelength of X-rays because as I told you that the diffraction is proportional to the wavelength of light since the X-ray wavelength is very small, so diffraction effect reduces. Next advantage is possibility of achieving high resolution and high throughput at the same time.
high resolution and high throughput because these are the three uh, out of the three parameter resolution, registration, and throughput. These are the three uh, parameters which evaluate a particular exposure tool. So here we can get a high resolution and high throughput uh, in, in at the same time using the extra lithograph. So what are other advantages? Low energy of soft X-rays reduces scattering effects in both the resist and substrate. The scattering effect, as I mentioned earlier also, is dependent on the energy of the beam. And if the scattering effect reduces, then the proximity correction is, no proximity correction is to be made because proximity error will be nil because of the scattering effect some proximity error is introduced and because of that I have to correct means I have to increase the gap between two fine lines so that proximity effect not deteriorate the line uh, definition. So here the proximity correction is not required if you use soft X-rays. Next point is X-rays are not appreciably absorbed by dart with low atomic number. So dart on the mask does not print as a defective pattern in the resist. This is a is a very important point. Dust particle or dart of low atomic weight will not behave as a mask to X-rays. We have seen in optical lithography the through the dust particles the optical beam means ultraviolet light here cannot pass through. The dust particles is the opaque body for ultraviolet light, but X-ray can easily pass through these dust particles. So that means the dust particles will not act as a mask in case of X-rays. So that will not introduce any pinholes or defect in the resist film. That is one of the one of the great advantage in extra lithograph. So what I mentioned earlier that due to the contact printing, the scra uh, scratch may affect, but uh, the dust particles may deteriorate the image pattern in optical lithography, that chance is not there in extra lithograph. Next point is low absorption of X-ray resist. Because of low absorption, a thick layer of resist can be uniformly exposed and it results straight wall resist images exactly replicating the mask pattern. What is that? If you want to expose a thick wall resist, then if the resist itself absorbs the light to a great extent, then you see the top, a thick photoist layer, the top will be getting higher intensity compared to the bottom layer, isn't it? In a thick layer, if you want to expose using a, a, using a uh, beam, optical beam, which is absorbed by the X-rays, sorry, which is absorbed by the photoist film, then what will happen? The top few layers, uh, few portion will when the optical radiation passes through the larger portion will be absorbed by that that the bottom portion of the resist will get low intensity beam and that will not uh, in that will not sufficient that will not be sufficient for completion of the reaction with the film means photoist film and uv light so that means the whole layer will not be adequately 
developed or reaction will not take place and it will not develop in a developed solution. So that means the straight wall resist image you will not get and you cannot get the exact replica of the mask pattern on the photoresist film. That is one of the uh, effect if the incident radiation is absorbed by the resist. But here the X-ray itself is not absorbed by the resist. So it will expose uniformly the top portion as well as the bottom portion of the resist as a result of which you can get expect the straight wall resist image. Okay. Now the point is coming now the X-ray resist, photoresist. The same photoresist which is used for optical lithography, will it be used in case of the positive, uh, will it be used in case of X-ray lithography? No. For X-ray lithography, you have to use different types of photoresist. And here also we use some positive resist and as well as negative resist and positive photoresist are PMMA and PBS. PMMA is a polymethyl methacrylate and PBS is polybutane 1 sulfone. You may forget the details of the photoresist name, but PMMA and PBS you have to remember, the short name. PBS and PMMA are the positive photoresist for X-rays and the same photoresist are also used in case of electron beam lithography also. And for this positive X-ray resist, the developer solution we use is 1 is to 1 methyl isobutyl ketane and isopropyl alcohol. 1 is to 1 mixture we use for developing the X-ray positive X-ray resist. And how it functions? X-rays are electron beam basically, those electron beam irradiate that irradiation of electron beam breaks chemical bond and molecular weight is reduced in irradiated area. If the average molecular weight is reduced enough, the irradiated material can be dissolved in a solvent that does not attack high molecular weight material. Let me explain again. On irradiation of the X-rays, what will happen? The molecular weight of the of the resist film, which resist film which is irradiated by the X-rays will be reduced. And because of the reduction of the molecular weight, those particular region of the resist film will be dissolved in a solvent, but solvent means developer solution, but that developer solution cannot attack the high molecular weight material. So that is the basic principle of the PMMA or PBS. Okay. In this case, what are its performance? Its performances are in positive X-ray resist, we can achieve a resolution nearly 0.1 micron. You can see how fine it is. In earlier case, in, in optical lithography, it is nearly 1 micron and 
in a projection printing we got up to 0.5, but here you can get nearly 0.1 micron. And one reason is the wavelength is very low, of the order of 5 to 50 angstrom unit. Whereas in UV light wavelength is nearly 300 nanometer, 3000 angstrom unit. That is one of the main reasons. Next is positive resist is slow and it needs much longer exposure time than negative ray. That is true in case of optical lithography also. I, if you remember, I have shown you some curve or response curve of positive and negative resist. So there we found the threshold energy of positive resist is higher compared to the negative resist. So for complete exposure and complete reaction, you need higher energy. So you have to expose it for a longer time. So that is true in case of the positive X-ray resist also. So here also it is a slow because it needs much longer exposure time than negative resist. Next point is slow resist has generally higher resolution than fast resist. So that is <laughs> normally it is true. Slow resist has generally higher resolution than fast resist and so we get high resolution in case of X-ray lithography using positive photo resist. Okay. Now let us move on to the negative resist. Negative resist, one name is COP and the full name of COP is very difficult to remember. It is poly glyce dimethyacrylate coethyl acrylate. So that is why the full name is never uttered in any of the applications we use COP. Negative X-ray resist is one name is COP. And its working principle is different from positive acting resist. Here the main working principle is based on radiation induced polymer cross linking similar to optical negative resist if you remember. There also on uh, irradiation, the cross linking is there and because of the cross linking, some polymer chain reaction is seen and that becomes hardened which cannot be developed in developer solution. Here also the cross linking occurs which causes new bonds to form between adjacent chains and create a complex three dimensional structure with higher molecular weight than surrounding non irradiated area. X-ray negative resist principle is similar more or less to with this positive resist. And here also like the optical negative resist it also swells and because of the swelling action uh, resolution is little bit hampered in this particular case. Okay. So these are uh, about the uh, positive and negative photoresist of X-ray, uh, resist of, I should not say photoresist because here no <laughs> photon is irradiated, here X-ray, so that is why we call it as X-ray resist. So positive X-ray resist and negative X-ray resist and working principle and name and its comparison just I mentioned. So next comes the mask. Will the same mask will serve your purpose? And that question will be answered in the next class. Okay.